Welcome to Buckeyes Tomorrow Morning for Tuesday, December 19th. I'm your host, Tom Moore. The Cotton Bowl game against Missouri in just 10 days. The game against Michigan in 347 days. Early signing day is tomorrow. A little bit of a few pieces of news on that front. Defensive lineman Carlin Jones, I'm going to talk to Mark Givler about on a show just a couple days ago. He committed to USC on Monday, so you can go ahead and scratch him off of your uh, off of your board if you are uh, scoring at home. Uh, Mark actually dropped a skull session column for our members at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That is on the Huddle Board, presented by Jeff Ruby Steakhouse. You can find updates on seven other top recruiting targets and current commits. Lots of rumors swirling. Mark tries to separate fact from fiction on you know guys who might be headed to Ohio State. Guys who might not be headed to Ohio State, guys who might be flipping, lots of stuff to keep your eyes on. Very, very busy week in the recruiting world. You can get, keep, sort of keep track of everything at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Uh, one other piece of potentially interesting news for Ohio State fans on the recruiting front, uh, former Ohio State commit and now former Georgia commit, five-star quarterback Dylan Rayola, he flipped his commitment on Monday from Georgia to Nebraska so some interesting, interesting to see Nebraska getting the better of Georgia on the recruiting trail. What a wild time to be alive. One final piece of really interesting news for the Buckeyes, potentially former Ohio State linebacker target Tackett Curtis. He just went in the portal on Monday evening as well. He just signed with USC a year ago. That's one they might want to keep an eye on for the Buckeyes as well. Recruiting season, transfer season. Oh yeah, there's a bowl game coming up in 10 days. Lots of stuff going on right now. So Today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the transfer portal, but a little bit about some other stuff. You're going to be hearing from Ohio State offensive lineman Josh Fryer. I had a chance to talk to Fryer last week, and this is just one of these things that I've had on my list that I wanted to get a show done because he had a lot of interesting things to say. And there has just been a lot of news going on. So we are finally now getting to it. Uh, we're going to start with Josh Fryer and his thoughts on the transfer portal. You get to hear lots of people talking about who's going in the transfer portal, who's leaving the transfer portal. You don't get to hear players talk about it in any kind of real depth all that often. So I thought this was kind of interesting. This is actually going to be two separate answers kind of butted together, but I think, you know, you'll you'll figure it out. You're not going to need me to explain it to you in the middle. Yeah, it's kind of, it's crazy now. Um, I think the thing what Dion said, it's like free agency. It's like um, who can get in the transfer portal and get the most NIL and go somewhere that you're going to win. So um, I, I, I don't I don't like it. So... Yeah, that's just my opinion. I mean, if you look at what I was, I started my fourth year, this is my fourth year, and it took me time to start. Um, and then when people just want to go somewhere else and start right away, it's, it, it, you have to earn it. You can't, you can't just be given it. When people give it, it's just, it's not as valuable to them as I think of it. Um, I mean, I was behind great players too, so like I learned from them, and then um, I progressed uh, through it, and then started, and then during the season I got a little bit better, um, and then uh, now for the Cotton Bowl, and then the second season starting, oh, feel good. So, was there a point during Josh Fryer's career at Ohio State where he thought seriously about transferring? Yeah, there was. Um, probably when I, I'd say probably when I tore my ACL. And then Coach Fry was coming in, but um, I think I grew during that time when I tore my ACL and was. Uh, I think I became a better person out of that, just stepping away from football in that aspect. When he was sort of wondering about when he might transfer, or whether he might transfer, there was a former Ohio State offensive lineman who played before the transfer portal era, who gave him some advice on the portal. And again, this is two answers back to back. The guy that pops in my head was Josh Myers when he told me, "Don't don't leave here. Um, even if you don't play, you'll get great um, connections through Ohio State um, that'll boost whatever you want to do in in your life." When we had that conversation, was it was I think it was COVID um, when we had that conversation because um, COVID was a difficult time as well because like my freshman year I didn't know what to expect coming here, um, such a jump. Uh, but then he told me to stick it out, and I think I've progressed through these years um, just learning about myself and more about Ohio State in general to make me appreciate everything that's gone on in my time here. Well, you already know the story on what happened after Josh Myers gave Josh Fryer that advice. Josh Fryer did decide he's to stick it out, ended up winning the starting right tackle job this year. 
How did he feel this season went for him? Felt like I'd grown. I think I regressed just a little bit. Um, uh, Team up North wasn't a very good game for me. Um, it was hard with the silent count. Um, that's one thing I think I got to improve on is the silent count as uh, I go forward um, and playing here. Um, but other than that, like I, you're going to have people say I have sacks and all that. Yeah, I, I, that's first year. I think everybody's gotten a sack or two, even like, I don't know, great, uh, like Joe Thomas or some guy like that. Um, but uh, it just makes me learn from it and grow as well when that happens and how not to do it. So I probably don't need to explain to anyone who is an Ohio State fan that there is a little bit of a mixed feeling, let's say, about the 2023 Ohio State season. Yeah, they won their first 11 games and were right in college football playoff contention yet again. And then they lost to Michigan. And then they're out of college football playoff contention. And now they're playing the Cotton Bowl and watching the college football playoff on TV. So it's kind of a mixed bag for the team. And when you're a player on that team, how do you evaluate that season? 11 wins on one hand and a loss to Michigan on the other. I think all the games we've grown. And I think the our loss is the biggest one that we've grown with. Um, <clears throat> it's difficult because people think an 11-1 season is pretty good. But not here, it's not. Um, you want to go undefeated and win the national championship. Um, so it's just taking it day by day, honestly, for our group as an offensive line, um, looking at what we did wrong um, and what we could do to make ourselves better and launch us into the Cotton Bowl and um, the 2024 season. And you heard him talk about some issues he had with the silent count earlier in the show. Now, just in case you don't know, silent count is – when they are on offense in a hostile atmosphere and it's too loud, you're not necessarily going to be able to hear the quarterback signals. You just got to look and they got to watch for the center to snap the ball. And then you turn your head back and you're looking for the defender. So when you're a tackle like Fryer, that is a big change from normally when you can just look ahead, look at the defender and just listen for the quarterback. So he explained in just a little bit more why that's such a big issue for a tackle. When we're in silent cadence, uh, it's, tough doing it because you have to look at the ball and then you don't know where the defender's at so then once the ball snapped you got to roll back and then look at the defender um so i think working on silent cadence is uh the biggest thing for me um and just knowing more about like when we were going in practice it was always looking at gt or jack uh pass setting but i think looking more straight ahead to see and perifin the ball to go back and then see in the defense fan. I hope you guys enjoyed that one. I thought he was a really interesting interview and not someone we've gotten to talk to a whole bunch this season. You've probably seen a lot of him this year, not necessarily heard a lot from him. So I want to let you do that. We've got some more interviews in the can. We'll, we'll try and get to some of those before we get down to the Cotton Bowl. Got a few more shows to do before we head down to Dallas. So we'll try and get to those for you. But boy, oh boy, there's a lot to talk about this week. Yeah, there's the Cotton Bowl. Yeah, there's early signing day on Wednesday. Yeah, there's a bunch of transfer portal potential targets and news for the Buckeyes. We're going to be following all of it for you at BuckeyeHuddle.com. If you're watching this on YouTube, we would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up, leave us a comment maybe. Uh, if you're watching this, if you're listening to this on a podcast platform of choice, you, if you can leave us a five-star rating or review, that will help other folks find these shows. Appreciate that as well. And then if you were a member of BuckeyeHuddle.com, make sure you check out the Huddle Board. Lots of interesting information from Mark in his Skull Session column that is on the the Huddle board at BuckeyeHuddle.com. And if you don't have access to that, well, why don't you think about signing up, becoming a member? We say give it a try. See if, uh, see what you, see if you like it. Give it. Uh, there's plenty of, uh, plenty of stuff to talk about right now. Plenty of insight, plenty of analysis, all at BuckeyeHuddle.com. That will do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Have a great day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.